Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Financial Help for Small Businesses, Understanding Loan Options. My name is Kelly Blount, and I'm the Program Marketing Specialist here at General Electric Credit Union. We're so glad you've joined us as we have a great discussion planned for you, and we wanted to thank you all for tuning in from the comfort of wherever you may be joining us from today. And with that, I'd like to turn things over to GECU's very own Paula Failer to introduce herself and today's guest speaker. Hello, I'm Paula Failer with General Electric Credit Union. I am the Senior Vice President of Commercial Lending, and I'm pleased to introduce our speaker, George Bardebeld of Chatham Business Capital. George is an industry expert in the small business lending, and Chatham is an essential partner in SBA lending for General Electric Credit Union. So without any ado, um, I welcome George. Thank you, Paula, and thank you to uh, to Kelly and the entire General Electric Credit Union team for having me. Uh, the The topic of uh, financing and access to capital is near and dear to uh, to my heart for a couple reasons. Um, a, I've spent my entire 29 year career uh, in the lending business, focused on small business lending. Um, secondly, uh, I have personally owned my own business for the last 22 years. And so this topic um, not only is near and dear to my heart, but I've had to navigate a lot of these issues that we're going to be talking about as, as a small business owner. And so I might be able to provide um, some unique perspective. So uh, for today's purpose, we're going to really talk about three different types of SBA loans, Small Business Administration loans, um, each of which serves a unique purpose depending upon where you as a business owner might be in your in your growth cycle. Um, clearly, there's you know a startup phase, uh, an early stage growth, and then maturity, um, all of which have a little bit different uh, characteristics that we're going to talk about. And each of those, you'll, you'll be able to see by the end of the webinar that each of these loan programs, and, and I'm gonna be general in terms of my characteristics, but you'll find that each of these loan programs uh, tends to focus uh, and, and solve issues for different types of companies, depending upon where you are in your growth cycle. So if you think about startup, early stage, and growth company characteristics, one of my favorite uh, sayings that I've again experienced it personally is whenever you're in a growth mode, growth consumes cash. And so when we think about what does that really mean, when when you're in that startup early stage growth you know phase, hiring staff is a huge uh, salaries and wages is a huge consumer of cash. Uh, for those of you who might be in research and development, that's certainly a huge consumer of cash that sometimes doesn't recognize revenue immediately, but maybe later down the road. Um, anytime you're in a growth mode and you're buying inventory or financing receivables, looking and investing in equipment, potentially real estate, all of those things as you're in growth mode consume cash. And so when, when I meet with business customers, one of the things that we tend to talk a lot about is really trying to understand where are you today, which I classify as point A, you know, how'd you get there? And if we're at point A today, if we try to look three to four years out, what does that look like? What's point B look like? And we talk a lot about the, the consumers of cash we talk about where revenues might be, you know, heading and how you get there in terms of the of your capital structure, the efficiency of how you get there is critically important to your success when you're in this particular uh, mode. So conversely, Typically what we find, again, I'm generalizing, but typically what we find with companies who are, who've, who've achieved perhaps, you know, point C and point D, 
in their maturity level. And what they're finding is, is that their growth is leveling out. And you have steady, rev steady revenue, limited growth. The demands on cash inside the business significantly change for the positive. Uh, and all of a sudden companies find themselves uh, not having some of those cash consumers or demand for cash in their growth cycle. And so what they what they tend to do is focus a little bit more longer term. The goals might be to, hey, instead of focusing so much on cash flow and how do I manage my cash, it's how do I reduce debt and, 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 and become debt free or as debt free as possible um, in terms of that reduction of, of leverage. And so the mindsets as we look at the different loan options are very, very different. And the loan programs, again, are designed to really address companies that are in different stages. So we're just going to touch real briefly on, on this. The SBA has a line of credit program it's called the 7A Express line of credit. This would typically be for companies who, um, from a lending perspective, uh, might be in that startup or early stage. There's a little bit of uncertainty about perhaps receivables. It might be early in the stages of, of growing your revenue. And so what the, what the lender might look for is a little bit of a government guarantee enhancement on the line of credit. Um, these lines of credit have a maximum $500,000 uh, loan amount. They typically allow you to have a true a two-year drawdown period so you can borrow up you can borrow down just like a typical revolver and then what we typically find is at the end of that two-year period whatever the loan balance is 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 termed out uh, or amortized over an eight-year period companies who even are in a growth mode um, and who have been in existence for three four five years will typically again this is a generalization typically not need to have that government enhancement and lenders like GE Credit Union you know might say hey we're totally comfortable with your historical cash flow how everything's looking and give you a conventional line of credit and so this particular financing vehicle again tends to typically be for your startup or early stage um, customer this is my favorite all-time loan um, out there uh, I, I get really, really excited about this loan product uh, because it does things that virtually no conventional or other loan out there do. And this is called the 7A um, term loan. And, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the features of this loan. And then we're going to go through a case study of an actual customer of mine that we finance that hopefully will help kind of put an exclamation point on what this what this program can do for companies um, all the way from uh, startup to you know right before uh, maturity uh, level in their, in their growth cycle so with the 7a loan program the first thing that i'm going to talk about is is there are no collateral requirements at all in other words if the s the sba could permit up to a $5 million loan um, with virtually no collateral. And so whenever you're borrowing conventionally, when we get to the 504 program, you're going to find that there are typically collateral restraints. Lenders are always asking, What's your, what, what kind of collateral do you have to secure my loan? The whole purpose of this loan, this 7A loan program, is to provide companies access to capital that they couldn't otherwise get, not because their credit's bad, but because in most cases, because there's no collateral or very limited collateral to secure the loan. So eligible use of loan proceeds can vary dramatically from um, owner-occupied commercial real estate. And so the SBA's definition of owner-occupied is you have to occupy 51% or more of the property. And so this would clearly be for office space. You know, if you're in the um, in, in, the, in, the, in the retail space, it could be for a retail building, manufacturing, uh, we do a ton of, so that could be your manufacturing plant, any type of owner-occupied commercial real estate, um, either the purchase, construction, 
renovation or refinance is eligible under the 7A loan program. You can buy machinery and equipment, or you can refinance machinery and equipment. Uh, you can do buyouts of uh, leases that, that in, in terms of equipment. Business acquisition financing and partner buyouts are a huge um, area that we do quite a bit of financing for. Um, typically in a business acquisition loan, there's really good cash flow, and that typically equates to there's not a lot of collateral. So we see a lot of business acquisition and partner buyouts have, uh, utilizing the 7A loan program. Uh, franchise finance is another biggie. Um, we do a lot of acquisition, refinance, expansion, or startup for different concepts um, across all different areas from, from food service to hospitality to daycare. I mean, you name it, auto repair shops, you name it. Um, most of those are eligible for, um, for the 7A loan program. What we find, and you'll see this um, in the case study, is again, most of our customers utilizing the 7A loan program have a lot going on. And the loan program doesn't have to be limited to one. It could be, hey, I'm going to buy some real estate. I need to move all this machinery and equipment. Um, and, and I got a lot of stuff going on. So we have the capability of building in permanent working capital so that you don't have to leverage your line of credit for a one-time purpose. And so we've got the capability of building in working capital into those loan structures. And the other thing we do a lot of is debt restructuring and refinance. And you're going to see that again um, when we get into the case study. Why are customers and businesses restructuring their debt? It's typically because the current terms that they have are typically on a much shorter amortization. And so when you look at the implication to what their monthly payment is and their available cash, the SBA allows extended terms versus conventional financing. And so it really lowers payments and it helps customers get from point A to point B a lot more efficiently. And again, you'll see this in the, in the case study. Um, so member benefits uh, for the 7A loan program, I just kind of alluded to it. You get much longer repayment terms than you'll find conventionally, which lowers your monthly payments. Um, there's a big hyper focus on increased cash flow to invest and expand your business. Um, whenever you're looking at fixed asset financing, in particular machinery and equipment in real estate, um, there's low to no down payment requirements. And so again, as we're looking at how to, how to keep as much cash in your business as possible, this program um, can be very, very attractive. Uh, and I, I touched on it briefly, but, but some of the industries that we're actively leaning into are industrial manufacturing, office, your medical professional space, you know, retail, hotels, gas stations, sea stores, franchise restaurants, and the list, and the list goes on. Um, you have to be for profit and you may not be publicly traded. Um, that would be ineligible type industries for, for SBA financing. Um, the loan amounts here that I listed are typically what we focus on, but I want to put a very big exclamation point, not necessarily GE Credit Union. Um, th there is no loan minimum. And so we tend to focus on loans 500,000 to 5 million. The maximum loan amount is $5 million, um, but we've done loans down to you know, 150, 200,000. So don't let that dissuade you from um, looking into an SBA loan. That just, again, tends to be what we as a company market. Okay, so terms. So if you're buying commercial real estate, the term of the loan is 25 years. What this means is the, and I touch on it below, there, there, if you are structuring a conventional loan, typically it will be like a three or a five year term with a 25 year amortization. The SBA does not permit what's called call provisions or balloon payments. And so when we finance something over a 25 year loan, it is a full 25 year term. Um, and that's really important uh, when, you're, when you're considering in particular in a growth cycle um, that 
if you have a down year in the period that the loan's coming due um, conventionally, that can sometimes be challenging when it comes time to refinancing your loan. The SBA is very protectionistic of you as the business owner. And so real estate's a full 25 year loan, machinery and equipment, and much um, all of the other uses of proceeds can be amortized over a 10 year period. In some cases, if you've got machinery and equipment, and I like to say, if you kick it with your foot and it hurts, um, if the useful life is longer than 10 years, we've done some 15 year equipment financing for stamping machines, metal bending, et cetera. Um, and so that's kind of on a case by case basis. Business acquisition financing uh, can also be on a 10 year um, term. And in terms of prepayment, um, penalties, the SBA is very flexible for prepayment penalties. If the term of the loan is 15 years or more, there's a three-year prepayment penalty, and you'll see that noted on there, five years and 5% 5 in year one, 3% in year two, and 1% in year three. The SBA does permit you, without a penalty, to pay off up to 20% of your loan in any given year without a penalty. But what I tell my customers is, is if you've got that much free cash flow where you can pay 20% of your loan off in any given year, it kind of goes against the, the purpose of the 7A loan, and that's to free up cash flow. Um, so I, I just tell people the flexibility is there. We rarely see that being fully utilized. Anything under a 15-year term has no prepayment penalty whatsoever. Um, Rates are, are based on a spread over the prime uh, rate, and obviously we've seen a pretty dramatic increase in the prime rate here the last couple of years. That rate, uh, again, typically varies on a quarterly basis, although there are some circumstances where it can be, um, where it can be fixed. And then the only other important note here is that any personal, uh, any owner that owns 20% or more um, is required by the SBA to provide a personal guarantee um, on the on the uh, on the loans, and so that's kind of an overall snapshot of the of the 7A loan program. And I'm sure that there's going to be some questions when we get um, finished, but I think what will be helpful is to give you a case study of one of my customers that we financed a couple of years ago. Um, that that it's kind of a cool it's kind of a cool story. So this was a customer. Um, that was in a pretty high growth mode. Uh, they actually had two completely, well, somewhat different lines of, of business, and they were all operating on one piece of property. And they were literally, I mean, literally having to move inventory, physically move inventory every single day to accommodate inventory from the other line of business that was coming. Um, it, it was an extremely inefficient operation, although the company was doing um, quite well. And so we were first introduced to this customer simply because they wanted to buy a piece of real estate for um, one of their lines of business so that they could segregate the two and become much more efficient. And so in this particular case, um, the, act, the real estate acquisition was $835,000. They needed to do some pretty substantial renovations to the property, a whole new roof. They needed to build out some of their office space. Um, and then they, they wanted to buy a new piece of machinery and equipment to the tune of 265,000. So quite a bit going on here. Buy real estate, finance the improvements to the building, buy some new equipment, and then you'll see um, down below that the equipment that they were moving from the one location to the other cost close to $100,000 to move. And so we advised them, don't utilize your line of credit for that because your line of credit is really to support receivables growth and inventory purchases. Let's put that into the term loan so that you're not lever unnecessarily leveraging your line of credit. So um, as we were looking at the client's um, existing debt structure, they had a $525,000 credit line from their existing bank that was on a, your, your traditional interest only note. 
that they had just purchased a pretty heavy machinery piece of machinery um, and that was on a very short amortization only three years and so when you looked at what was happening in this business is they were on a very high growth but the manner in which they financed this eight hundred thousand dollar piece of machinery was killing their cash flow they were paying twenty one thousand dollars a month alone on this piece of machinery and equipment and what it was doing was is all of their free cash flow was going to pay down their their debt and it was prohibiting them from expanding in a number of areas that could have proven to be very profitable for both lines of business. The conventional bank um, was more than willing to finance the, the real estate um, and, and the improvements and also the equipment, but they were gonna require the, the customer to put down, and it's very customary, um, in this case, it was 15% down conventionally. I would argue that's very aggressive for conventional financing. Typically, it's 20, but that shows you how how good this customer was, how well this customer was doing. Um, so they wanted the customer to come out with $200,000 down payment. They were going to finance the real estate over 20 years, the equipment over five, and between their existing payments, their new monthly debt service would be $32,000 and they would have to pull $200,000 out, out of their cash position. This is a classic case of business owners when they're in a growth mode being really challenged because while they may be able to afford it, the question is, is afford it at the expense of what? And so if this particular customer had to pull out 200,000 out of their cash balances and absorb $32,000 a month in debt service. It would have limited their ability to expand their inventory base and they were very inventory heavy. It would have prevented them the ability to go hire additional people, which they ne de desperately needed. And so while there was a solution there, <clears throat> this was a perfect example of how an SBA loan, in particular the 7A loan, was a tremendous solution. And so what we did is, is we said, listen, you need, you need to hang on to as much cash as possible. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to finance the real estate, the construction, the purchase of the equipment, and we're going to do it. And we're going to give you working capital so you can move all your equipment for no down payment, which the SBA permits. We're also going to refinance your existing debt and put it over a 10-year term versus a three-year term. And so when we blended the, what we did is we did a weighted average uh, of real estate on 25 years and equipment on 10. We ended up providing them a $2.2 .2 million loan over 18 years with no money down. And if you look, their monthly debt service was less than what they were paying on the equipment alone. The customer literally looked at me and said, what am I missing here? This is too good to be true. And I said, what we're doing is, is we're accomplishing a lower monthly debt service by extending your debt out. I mean, that's, that's exactly what, you know, what we're doing. His vantage point was, is, is yes, it's going to cost me more interest expense, but what I'm going to be able to do with this free cash flow in terms of tripling my inventory offering significantly expanding my other manufacturing sector and going to my customers and saying, hey, I know we've been outsourcing this, but now I can bring this all in house. He said, this is a no brainer. This customer in three years more than doubled his revenue and ended up paying off this loan early. His mindset was focused on my previous comment. He was at point A, he was looking at point B, and he said, you know what? I'm much less concerned with how fast I'm paying off this debt because if I'm able to get to point B with all of my free cash flow that I'm going to be able to reinvest back into the business, I'm going to be so profitable. I can pay this thing off a lot faster once I achieve point B, which is exactly what he did. And so this is a great example, live deal um, here in Ohio. 
where this is what the epitome of of the SBA program uh, is is designed for for the 7A loan program. It's multiple uses of um, proceeds. It's a lot going on, but it's putting everything into one loan and creating a really efficient low uh, monthly payment program. 504 loan program. We're going to shift gears way over to the mature side. And again, I'm generalizing here. It's not every case. The 504 loan program is, we have a lot of customers who say, hey, George, the 7A loan program sounds great, but I don't need all of that. You know, I'm cash rich. I've got cash sitting on my balance sheet. There's just not, you know, we're, we're in that more mature cycle where I'm not, yes, I'm paying my people, but I'm not hiring a whole bunch of new folks. I'm not having to invest in equipment and inventory and receivables. And so I'm a little bit better positioned. And all I really want to do is I want to buy either equipment or I want to buy real estate. I want to lock in the rate and I just want to forget about it. And it's more of a longer term play. Fixed asset financing, there are loan to value requirements. And so it's a collateral focused um, loan. And the typical structure is you, the customer puts down 10%. The conventional loan uh, is at 50%. So if we were doing a million dollar real estate purchase, you would put $100,000 down. GE Credit Union would do a $500,000 conventional first mortgage. And then the SBA would come in and sponsor a bond for 40% for $400,000. The advantage of the bond is it is a long-term fixed rate. It is a 20-year fixed rate. And so that is very attractive to a lot of customers who, again, if you're in that long-term mature, mature cycle in your business and you're like, I just want to forget about it, getting a 20-year fixed rate is great. Again, it typically is for customers who say, hey, I know that I'm going to be in this thing long-term because there is a substantial prepayment penalty on that bond in the first 10 years. And so as I'm advising my customers, I'm saying, is, is there any potential for something material changing in your business, you know, in the first five, six, seven years, because here's what the prepayment penalty is. Um, and so again, very different. It's a great program, um, especially if you want that long-term fixed rate, but it's definitely for customers who are in that more mature um, life cycle. So I know I've I know I've covered um, qu quite a bit um, quite quickly, but I'm happy to uh, answer. You know, if we want to step back, I'm happy to answer any questions on any of the loan programs or anything that might um, be on your mind. Thank you, George. We will now open it up for the Q and A session of today's webinar. So if you think of a question. You can submit that using the questions feature in your attendee panel. I know there were a few questions that were pre-submitted as well, so want to make sure we get to that. So I'll go ahead and start with one of those. Um, that first question asks, how long does it take a 7A loan to close? That is an excellent question, and it varies depending on what you're doing. And so I'll give you an example. So um, if you if you are um, simply purchasing a piece of equipment or um, new equipment in particular that doesn't require an appraisal, uh, that loan can typically be approved um, in a matter uh, once we receive all the information that's required to underwrite. That that can typically be approved, you know, in a two to three week period and closed. I like to say on more simplistic deals, a 30 to 45 day, you know, window. And that's very conditioned upon um, the receipt. Our our biggest challenge on loan closings is not getting what we need from our, from our customers. Um, so those loans can tend to be closed pretty quickly. Whenever you start to get into scenarios that require third-party reports. So I'll give an example. So if you were purchasing a business um, that had real estate and equipment involved, um, the first thing that we're going to have to do is get a business valuation. We're going to have to get an appraisal on the real estate. 
we're going to have to get an appraisal on the equipment. We're going to have to likely, if it's in any type of uh, industry, in particular manufacturing, where there might be environmental concerns, you're looking at requiring phase ones uh, environmental report. Um, God forbid something comes up where a phase two is required because all bets are off if, if that happens. Um, we're typically getting surveys, title, and so multiple, multiple layers of third-party reports. And by the way, you're going to get those same exact things if you're borrowing conventionally. I, I, I want to make sure that that's clear. But we, I would probably budget if you're if you're getting any type of use of proceed that involves some of those third-party reports, you're typically in that 60 to 90 day window. Um, again, unless something comes up that that creates further due due diligence. Um, but those third-party reports um, in managing all of those can can tend to take um, some time. This next question is asking, is there a minimum loan amount for 7A loans? Uh, no, is the short answer. The SBA um, has different program parameters within its 7A loan. As an example, they have like a community advantage, which goes up to like 50,000. What that means is, is on, these small, on some of the smaller loans like that, the application process is much easier. In fact, up to 350,000, they will sometimes have credit score driven. Um, the SBA has realized that on some of these smaller transactions, it can be a little onerous. And honestly, it, it can provide a disincentive for some lenders to even offer those because there's so much work. And so, on the smaller loans, they've created in the last couple of years a, tr a, a much more efficient um, underwriting platform that can be much more efficient, not only for the borrower um, or business, but also uh, the bank or the credit union. So in short, no, some lenders will set loan parameters just based on their business model. Um, but by SBA standards, there is no loan minimum. This next question is asking, um, can I get a fixed rate 7A loan? Or what does the rate structure look like? Yep, great. An another, another great question. That is lender. Um, so what you'll find is the SBA, I'll use a football analogy. The SBA has one playbook and it's called the SOP. And every single lender has to follow the SOP. Which plays you call, again, using a football analogy, which plays you choose to call or how you choose to use the SOP is lender specific. And so some lenders absolutely offer a fixed rate 7A loan option. Other lenders say we're not going um, we're not going to offer fixed rate. And it's really more um, lender driven in the sense of uh, their business strategy in terms of you know their cost of funds, what their deposit. I mean it, it gets into some of the bank strategy in terms of its um, management of its balance sheet. But the simple way to answer that is is, Fixed rate 7A financing is available um, and it will vary lender to lender. And I would say that some lenders will even say, hey, if it's if it's fully secured, sometimes they'll put caveats in there and say, hey, if we have a fully secured loan and it's predominantly machinery and equipment, we'll be much more likely to offer a fixed rate than if it were a, a more unsecured loan. But it's it really it it really varies lender to lender. Our next question is asking about 504 loans. It says, what can a 504 loan be used for and how is it structured? So 504 loans, um, for the most part, there is a refinance component to a 504. But the, the underlying theme that you need to think about when looking at 504 financing is its fixed asset. So could you finance inventory? 
or a business acquisition that has goodwill using a 504? No. Um, they have a maximum loan to value of 90%. And so by nature of a 504 loan, it's, it's fixed assets. It's machinery and equipment. It's real estate. Um, the machinery and equipment carries a 10-year term. Real estate carries uh, a 20 to 25-year term. Um, and the, the typical structure is 10% down. There's no 0% down financing in a 504. So 504 is 10% down, a 50% first mortgage from the lender, and a 40% second mortgage from the SBA. And so using that million dollar example, it would be $100,000 down. Uh, GE Credit Union, as an example, would provide a $500,000 first mortgage. And the SBA allows the lender to have a first lien or a first mortgage position, which really provides incentive for the credit union to do that deal because they're at a 50% loan to value. Then the SBA comes behind the lender in a second position, and in this scenario would offer a $400,000 20-year, if it's real estate, 20- or 25-year fixed rate loan. I'm happy to expand on that if you have follow-up questions. It looks like this might actually be our last question. It says, can I get more than one 504 loan? Yes, you can get one more than one 504 loan. You can get more than one 7A loan. We have borrowers who, we have a, a um, uh, it's a, Maca a, a Jimmy John's uh, franchise. He has eight SBA loans. Uh, so you can get more than one. The limit, the limiting factor is that you, um, any 20% any or more owner has a maximum of a $5 million, gar uh, gar a $5 million loan amount. And so stated a different way, just using round numbers, $3.8 million, $3 million guarantee amount. And so functionally on the 7A loan, the government guarantees 75%. And so if you did a $5 million loan, which is a maximum loan amount, the government is offering a guarantee to the lender equal to 75% of that or $3,750,000. You can't, as an individual borrower, and the same applies, by the way, with 504. As an individual borrower, you can't go get three $5 million loans. You could get $5 million loans but you can't get you can't go north of that five million dollar loan amount or um, roughly a three million seven hundred fifty thousand dollar bond amount, which is that again that forty percent um, on a five hundred four loan. So there are definitely caps in terms of how much you can borrow, but there's no prohibition against the number of loans as long as you're within that cap. All right, and that was our last question. So that's going to conclude our Q&A session for today. If you have any further questions that come up after today's webinar, Paula's contact information is up on the screen. Feel free to reach out to her directly and she can connect you with George or help to answer your question. But with that, that concludes today's webinar. Thank you all so much for joining us and have a great rest of your day.